The first thing I want to do is take a look at this as a movie itself, because again, we are going to circle back to the MCU part of it here in more of the review, but with spoilers, I think that this movie does such a good job of incorporating horror elements. Now, one thing that's really, really cool about this movie is just how Sam Raimi had some of these shots done. For example, Wanda, when she's going to take over her alternate reality self in the Illuminati multiverse reality, I guess would be the way to call it, because I don't remember the exact number. It's really interesting how they show her sort of from an Evil Dead-ish perspective. We see like a first person spirit view, almost like we'd see in Evil Dead 1, 2, or Army of Darkness, where you see the Kandorian demon flying and it's just the camera and it's done in first person, right? So it's like you're seeing from the view of Wanda, of her alternate reality, or her main reality self, going to invade the body of her alternate reality self. It's very confusing to talk about out loud, but I love the way they shoot that and how they have the camera pull back behind uh, the banister with, you know, the stairs and stuff. They do a really good job in this with that horror imagery, especially earlier on in the movie when you see Wanda crawl out of the mirror dimension and she's sort of backwards almost in a way, uh, kind of like, again, it's Evil Dead-ish. And I think that's just the easiest way to describe parts of this movie because it was very obvious that Sam Raimi was bringing in his expertise from creepy projects he had worked on before, but it's not like this is a movie just geared at horror fans. Like, it's not a super scary movie. It just uses that imagery very well. He also brought in his experience from things like the Spider-Man trilogy, where he's able to tell this hero's story. Now, my concern going in was how will Sam Raimi tell this hero's story while tying it into someone else's universe. And that's something he was able to do incredibly, incredibly well. I will say that with this movie, there are some things that I think a lot of people, myself included a little bit, went in expecting that we didn't fully see, but that has nothing to do with the quality of the film, okay? That's where we're going to get into the MCU episodic part of it. Quality of the film, is outstanding. I love almost everything about it. There was no acting that stood out to me as bad or uh, stereotypical or anything like that. I talked about the writing of America. One thing I loved with America Chavez is how they're able to show her background. Now, one thing I don't like about it is it almost seems like it's shot in a way where the scene could just be yanked out for something like China eventually, but I've also been seeing that Disney's looking like it's not going to release in China anymore. So I'm not sure if that was an intent at all or not. I really have no idea, but they're able to show America's background with her parents, both of her moms actually, and what happens to them and how they get pulled into the multiverse and sort of this tragedy that happens with America that ties her very closely to Stephen Strange. That's one thing that I think is really cool is how you have these interconnected relationships, despite the fact that one of them's a 14 year old girl and one of them is a borderline middle-aged man. And it's not creepy. It's almost like an older brother or fatherly type relationship between these two, because you see the movie start with America trying to work with a different Doctor Strange in a different dimension. He betrays her and they kind of need to build up this trust when she gets to our MCU dimension, when she gets to what they called 616, which actually frustrated a lot of comics fans and was kind of funny, but regardless, I understand that too. Uh, when we got there and we started seeing these characters build up on each other, there was immediate chemistry between her, Benedict, and well, I should say Dr. Strange and Wong. You know, those three had a very good repertoire immediately where you could tell that they got along well on set. And this is something that I think some people worried about with Sochi because it's not like she's super new to acting, but a lot of people didn't really know who she was going into this. That paired with America Chavez, a character that people were already nervous about, I think kind of made some people go into this kind of like, oh man, I hope this isn't bad. And I went into it kind of like not knowing anything about that character, hoping to like her, uh, and I came out loving that character. I love some of the stuff like the dialogue early on in the cafe where you have, you know, Strange, Wong, and America, and they're talking, and they're talking about Spider-Man and joking and making jokes about like how, oh, does his webs come out of his ass? Like that kind of stuff. And Strange is like, he doesn't remember Peter Parker specifically. And he's kind of like, I, I, I didn't think about that. I hope not. And you know, they have like a lot of moments of levity in this movie, but it's also very serious. This movie deep down is dealing with the grief that Doctor Strange has. It's a very self-reflective movie because it asks the question over and over of, is Stephen Strange 
happy? Is he fulfilled in what he's doing now? Yes, he was a surgeon originally, and he saved lives, but he did it for selfish reasons in a lot of ways. Maybe he got into medicine to help people, but he hit a point by the, you know, the uh, first end of the first act of Doctor Strange 1, where it was pretty much just, he's doing it for his record and his recognition and to feel good and get all of his name brand watches. By the end of this film, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, it's come full circle. We get to see why Strange earlier on in this film cared so much about the watch that was almost stolen for him on his way to Camartage in the original film. It's because Christine gave it to him as a present. He had a ton of sentimental value for this. We get to know Doctor Strange more as a character over the course of Multiverse of Madness and realize that it wasn't really that he was such a pompous ass that everyone was beneath him and that he didn't want to love Christine or didn't want to be with anyone. Yes, those things mattered, but what it really was was he was scared. He was scared of falling in love. He was scared of being emotionally vulnerable with someone. It's a very, very real character development for Stephen Strange that I thought was done incredibly well and shows that beneath all this gruff exterior and this magic man is just kind of a hurt person who went through a lot of stuff in life. Showing him repair his watch that he got from Christine in the ending was really, really powerful. And when you actually see him put it away in his little wooden drawer, it actually really does sort of call back to the beginning of Doctor Strange 1, where he's going through his drawer and he's looking at all of his watches that are in these rotating cases and he's like all enamored by his physical, uh, you know, objects and stuff. And he picks one out. By the end of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, he knows what matters to him. Yes, he did miss out on Christine. And maybe it would have never worked anyway, their relationship, because she's married now. But what he realizes is that he does need to be open with people. He does need friends. He sort of lets Wong in more as well at the end and shows Wong this symbol of respect by bowing to him since he's technically the Sorcerer Supreme. And even though it didn't really matter to Wong and it was just kind of a joke, that gesture goes to show this growth of Stephen Strange into a person who cares even more about people. It's almost like all along he had this capacity for empathy in him, and he had this capacity to be such a good person in him, but he buried it and was so surface level in his entire life that it took a long time and a lot of wasted years to realize who he really was. His hero's journey came very full circle by the end of this movie, and I love it. And speaking of hero's journeys, they do a really good job with America as well. Like I said, they do introduce her very organically, and I've mentioned that a few times, but they also do sort of end her character off in this movie with a lot more potential to grow. She is not the super powerful badass girl who saves the day and completely wraps up everything in the movie, but without her, they would have lost. They absolutely would have lost. One thing I really like about this is that it knows how to write the character. The way to write the character is not have Captain Marvel swoop in and almost one-shot Thanos to try and show how strong she is. That's not really the way to write a character very well. The way to write characters is to show them deal with problems, show them struggle, and show them naturally grow over time. You don't start them at point Y and then try and get them to point Z by the end and wonder why people don't care that they missed the rest of the alphabet. You work them through those stages and get them there. I think that's one thing I loved about America, is it didn't feel like there was any kind of reason America Chavez was here, except for the story. It felt like she was here to help Stephen Strange in his movie discover more things about himself, while also introducing her character to the larger MCU in a really cool and powerful way. I also thought it was awesome to see the way that they worked with the villain. It was unexpected to me to see Wanda be a villain here. Yes, I know WandaVision and everything that happened there, but it seemed like by the end of that, she was very much back in control of herself, even though she was still dealing with grief. But you get to see the Darkhold, the book that she got at the end from Agatha Harkness, and how she sort of wraps her head around that and it corrupts her slowly over time. And even she does have a grief filled journey that you do understand at least somewhat if you've watched WandaVision before, but it also does help to know that the book is corrupting her severely. I think they handled her character well. I don't think you can do this again though. I think that you either need to move Wanda back towards a more heroic role or retire the character. My hope is they move her back towards a more heroic role. 
I've always loved Elizabeth Olsen. I've always loved the way she plays this character. I've always thought that she was very likable. And I think actually that her relationship with Vision was probably one of the most human aspects of the MCU, despite how short it was, you know, despite how little we got to see of it with things like the flashbacks in WandaVision and even the beginning of Infinity War and other stuff like that, they really managed to humanize those characters very well. And that humanization continues here, even though she is very much the villain. You understand why she's the villain in some ways, but in the ways that you can't, it's also easy to rationalize the Darkhold's power on her, which I think is a good thing because maybe it's a little bit of a cop out to say the book turned her evil, but it very much makes sense with the themes of the film and how the film works. The inclusion of the Illuminati and actors like Patrick Stewart as Professor X or John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, you know, those things uh, we had obviously Haley Atwell as Captain Carter, uh, you know, they, they did a really interesting job with these characters and I really liked it, but I will say there's things I don't like about it in terms of the overall MCU and I want to get into that too, but I love the way those characters portray themselves. I really like the lore of the Illuminati, despite the fact that some of the inclusions on it are a little random, like Captain Carter. I love her, but it's a little bit odd to put her on that think tank. Regardless, I really do love the inclusion of those characters and that reality. It's very, very interesting. It's cool to see Patrick Stewart come back as Professor X, and he has one of the most Professor X moments ever in this movie. You know, when they are basically going to vote to kill this strange, and it seems like he was never really in favor of killing the original. Uh, because the original Supreme Strange, in that universe, he had gone bad from using the Darkhold, right? He had gone bad and had corrupted him. He helped them take down Thanos when Thanos was on Titan. They stopped him, but then they had Black Bolt kill Doctor Strange because they believed that he would cause a lot of destruction. He had already accidentally destroyed an entire reality by using the Darkhold to dreamwalk. So it made sense their reasoning for why they did what they did, but Professor X has always been a person of hope, and it made sense that he would be one of the people against that who would say, no, listen, just because someone lost their way doesn't mean they are gone forever. There is hope they can change. This was such a really good moment for this Professor X. Not He's not the one from the Fox X-Men movies. Important to note, he's his own Professor X. And it was really cool to see John Krasinski come in as Mr. Fantastic and play that character very well too. And even to see his powers on screen. And I say that because we really only get to see him do one thing and then he gets obliterated. And that's kind of where it comes down to what I didn't like about the inclusion of the Illuminati and the other universes. Yes, I want this to focus on Stephen Strange. It is his movie. It is not fair to expect this to be um, a celebration of 500,000 universes we have never seen before ever. But one of the sort of I guess I should say uh, in interpretations of the trailer or one of the implications that Marvel gave was that we'd be seeing a lot of these different realities and seeing their effect on the multiverse and seeing how different they are. And we don't really get to spend much time in any of them. That's one thing I didn't like that much. For example, all of the other Doctor Stranges save Sinister Strange were kind of a disappointment to me. You have someone like Defender Strange, you get to see him for a couple minutes, and then he only matters in the last act because of what Doctor Strange uses him for, which is one of the coolest moments in Marvel history and amazing, but it also raises a lot of questions. For example, there are a lot of rules in the multiverse about not crossing over into different realities because of incursions, or the possibility of what happened in something like the comics in 2015, I believe, Secret War, you know, where our Secret Wars, where essentially what happened was Ultimate Universe collided with the main one, and then they sort of destroyed each other, right? That's an idea they introduced in this movie. But what's weird is the rules seem very fast and loose. For example, America Chavez can travel to pretty much any universe and it doesn't matter. She's actually staying in the main MCU reality by the end of the movie and it's okay because she is the only one of herself in the multiverse. Then how come you can have Defender Strange's body in the reality with normal Doctor Strange in the MCU saying it's not a problem? How come you can have essentially the, our Doctor Strange travel to the reality of the Illuminati and hang out there, even though there was a previous Doctor Strange there that's dead now, but his particles still exist, you know, like he's still there, matter is not really created or destroyed. If you can have 
say, you know, those two Doctor Stranges in the same timeline, or our Doctor Strange go to the Illuminati timeline, and how come Christine couldn't actually come over from the Illuminati universe to our universe, to our MCU? Because clearly by the time this movie ended, they rebuilt sort of that connection between the two. Now, I will say that it does make sense to move away from Christine, because as you probably saw in the post credits, they did introduce another character here who will come to probably be a love interest for Stephen Strange if the comics are going to be followed at all. So it does make sense that they did that. But in terms of the rules of the multiverse, it's yet another thing where it kind of feels like we're changing those rules and explaining things away to sort of fit the convenience of the MCU or of the movie itself and not actually be consistent. Sort of like the complaint a lot of people have had about the spell for Peter Parker in No Way Home. So if you're looking at it that way, some of the rules in this movie don't make that much sense to me. I don't know if Marvel is still figuring them out with the multiverse or what, but it sort of makes the self-righteousness of the Illuminati a little more off-putting because you essentially have a new version of Captain Carter, a new version of Reed Richards, the first we've seen in the MCU, actually. And, you know, they're so up their own ass about their science, and they're ready to murder the new Doctor Strange. And you're thinking, okay, that's weird, but I get to see John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, as Reed Richards. That's awesome. I love this. Oh my gosh, Patrick Stewart is back. That's Haley Atwell. First off, mommy. That's what, That was my immediate reaction. Oh my word. Second off, Captain America, but a hot girl? Okay, I was thinking a little too much about Haley Atwell. But third off, you have like a less likable version of her, but you're like, well, it's okay. She said the thing. She said, I can do this all day. This is really cool. And then Wanda comes in and obliterates them all immediately. And it's one of those things where, to me, it was like, this is so cool in the concept of the movie, right? We get to finally see this fan casting people wanted, like John Krasinski, or people have been asking for Haley Atwell to actually show up live action Captain Carter. And we're like, oh, they're here, even if they're not the version I thought they'd be. Oh my gosh, Patrick Stewart, and he's got the thing. He's got the wheelchair. It's like the hover chair from the 90s cartoon. Oh my word. And then they're all just obliterated by Wanda completely and you're thinking why like I'm thinking why did you bother to get John Krasinski for this to just murder him right away why did you bother to bring back Patrick Stewart and hype this up in the trailer like we should tell him the truth and you see his hover chair kind of come in and his bald head glistening in the sun in true Patrick Stewart glorious fashion and then he's dead we watch him get his neck snapped again how many times do I have to watch Patrick Stewart's Professor X which is so perfect get murdered on the big screen I saw enough of it in Fox X-Men it happened way too much and now we're bringing it back again you know these are the things that to me like even though in the concept of the film they were amazing in the concept of the MCU as a whole kind of bothered me like I want to see Haley as a live action Captain Carter, but I want her to be the good one, the one I like. I want to see Professor X show up, but I want him to be a likable version. And this one was, and then we murdered him. You know, so it's like, if you're going to kill off people, fine, kill off Mordo. He's so far up his own ass in this movie and so full of himself, whatever, you know, fine. There are Illuminati members you can, you can get rid of. Black Bolt, yes, he was very, very full of himself. His death, by the way, incredibly brutal for a PG-13 movie. We watched the guy's head implode. It was insane really cool in the context of this movie fine with it you know i'm fine with them killing off half of this illuminati cast but when we get into these things like john krasinski or Haley atwell or patrick stewart to me personally it kind of felt a little bit like a slap in the face of why did we bother to bring them in now here's what i'll say here's what i'll say i know you're typing in the comments somebody is mad that i didn't like that part I love it in the context of the film. You have to understand that. I'm reviewing this as two things, film, MCU, project. It's both, and it crosses over like this, like those diagrams your teachers always showed you that kind of looked like a pair of boobs, but you, you know, you didn't really think about that till later, and then you couldn't stop unseeing it. I don't know, maybe I'm just fucked up. But, you know, it, it is both of these things. Here's the problem with it. If this is the only time we see John Krasinski read Richards, that's gonna piss me off. If this is the only time I get to see live action Haley Outwell Captain Carter, I'm gonna be mad. If this is the last time Patrick Stewart does Professor X, that sucks in terms of the MCU. But in terms of the movie, it works incredibly well for who those characters are. And that's what I wanna get across is that my personal view on it is more going to be in hindsight. 
if it is the only time we get to see those actors that I've wanted to see forever, either come back or show up for the first time in those roles, and this is it, that's gonna bum me out, like hardcore. Like John Krasinski especially. Like that was amazing, and Haley Atwell. Like, I love Patrick, but I've seen so much of his Professor X, I never expected him to come back anyway. So to me, that was just a treat. But when you bring these guys in and it's such a big deal and then they're gone immediately, yes, it does add weight to the movie and it shows the stakes, but it was a little frustrating to me personally. Sort of my closing thoughts on the multiverse aspect of this movie are that it depends what you're going into this for. If you're going into this for a Doctor Strange film, right? This is fantastic and amazing. If you're going into it for an exploration of the multiverse as a whole, we actually don't get to see that much of it. We see some flashes, we see the Illuminati timeline at least a little bit more extensively, and we get to see sort of some of the background there, and we get to see Sinister Strange and his timeline a little more fully, but we don't get all the answers on that either. So I think that that's interesting. I think they do a good job of it. And I do think Sinister Strange was done very, very well as a villain for the short time he was in this movie, especially the stuff they talk about where he used dreamwalking to force some of his other selves to kill themselves. Stuff like that is super dark. Like they did a good job with that character. But you look at characters like they were making Funko Pops of Supreme Strange, okay? And we see him in like one scene that's a flashback and hear a couple things about him. He didn't really matter that much. Or they were talking about Defender Strange before this movie showed up and everybody was really excited for him. And then he just dies immediately and he only matters pretty much as like a meat suit for Doctor Strange to wear to the final fight, essentially. You know, like that's all he really matters of is that his body is there to be used as a plot device later on in the movie. And again, one of the coolest scenes in the entire MCU is when Stephen Strange takes over Defender Strange's body and then sort of subjugates the souls of the damned and turns them into a cloak and then goes off to face Wanda. Incredible. It's amazing. But then when you're looking at it as part of the overall MCU and a multiverse thing, if you kind of went into it more hoping for that, I do think some of those things could be a little bit disappointing. They don't bother me too much. I try and look at this more as a film itself because I think that the decisions Sam Raimi made in this film work incredibly well for the film. But the stuff that I do have a problem with, you know, like I said, with Krasinski and some of these other things is more like if this is our only exposure to them or if, say, we were to not see a lot of the multiverse going forward and this is our exposure to it. Those things would bum me out a lot because in terms of the universe, I think they would be a missed opportunity. There's not many missed opportunities within the writing of this film, though. I loved pretty much everything they did. Even a character like Wanda, who was an antagonist the entire time, got her full circle ending and growth. They were able to force her to open her eyes and sort of confront what she had become. And they did give her a good ending, and they even point that out in the movie. Everybody was well written, in my opinion, and very organic. I loved it. To me, this is one of the best MCU movies. I don't know where I would rank it, but I think that it was incredible. I loved it. I'm excited to see things going forward, like the inclusion of Clea. I'm excited to see her relationship with Strange now that he's sort of realized who he is and he's accepted fully this magic role and he's willing to die for others at this point, you know? And, and he proved that in Infinity War and he proved it again now. And to see those two characters come together and to kind of see the mythos go forward, I don't know when we'll see it. Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be taking a little break from acting for now, but I'm so excited to see them come back. I love this film to death, and I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are of it down below. There's more I could have talked about, but the video is already too long, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please be sure to check out in the description everything, including Enchanted Glamour, which is a wonderful, fantastic, lovely little Etsy store that is run by my wife. I help her out with it as well. Uh, the profits for that do go to help the channel and help us sort of sustain sustain our growth and do other stuff and she makes very wonderful jewelry and all kinds of stuff and she's actually getting into resin now to preserve things like flowers pretty much for the remainder of your lifetime maybe to give to someone you love and show them how everlasting your love is for them whether they're family friend or again victim of stalking it's it's up to you i don't judge please buy it i need the money also discord down in the description below hang out with us talk make some friends we love you very much please subscribe leave a like have a fantastic day and as always everyone stay shway and stay strange ah!